Hello everyone. Myself, Hiran Patel, associated with LJ Institute of Engineering and Technology. So in this current video lecture series, we are studying subject of physics group 1. Today, in this video, we are going to start a new chapter named as superconductivity. So in today's video, we are covering the topics such as introduction to superconductivity, discovery of superconductivity and we will discuss few properties of superconductivity. So let's start with the first topic of today's session that is introduction to superconductivity. So before moving on to the superconductivity, let's recall the other three materials are conductors, semiconductors and insulators. So we have studied in the 11-12 standard that these three materials are different from each other by one property called as resistivity or we can say that resistance. So resistance is a property of material which opposes the flow of current. So we can say that if resistance is higher then current is lower. In conductor resistivity is less compared to insulator. So we can say that in conductor the current is flowing more than compared to the insulators. So we know that conductor has lower resistivity and insulator has higher resistivity. So now let's come to the superconductivity. So superconductor is a material that loses all its resistance to the flow of electric current flowing through it when it is cooled below a certain temperature. So we can say that superconductor is a type of material that loses all its resistance to the flow of current at a certain temperature. That temperature is also known as critical temperature. So, superconductor has zero resistance at some temperature. So, we can say that at this temperature, current flowing through it is maximum. So, there are some materials which exhibits that superconductivity property like mercury, zinc and tin. So, we can say that the temperature at which material's resistivity drops down to zero is known as critical temperature. So we can define superconductivity as the flow of electric current without resistance in certain metals, alloys and ceramics at a temperature near about absolute zero. So, these are the basic concepts about superconductors or that phenomena is known as superconductivity. So now let's discuss how that superconductivity discovered by a Dutch physicist Ohms. So superconductivity was first discovered in 1911 by the Dutch physicist named as Ohms. So, Ohms felt that a cold wire's resistance would dissipate. It means that when wires is placed at low temperature, that it might be its resistance would dissipate. This suggests that there would be a steady decrease in resistance allowing for better conduction of electricity. So now, at a very low temperature, that scientist Ohms felt that there would be a leveling of resistance 
regenerate some minimum value and that allows the current to flow with no resistance or we can say that a little amount of resistance so all pass the current through a very pure mercury wire and measures its resistance as he steadily lower the temperature you can see in the graph here is the graph of resistance versus temperature so all surprise there was no resistance at 4.2k temperature so as we have discussed in the concept of superconductivity at the certain temperature the resistance of that material becomes zero so we can say that at 4.2k the electrical resistance of the material to the flow of electric current is zero it means that there will be a extremely good conductivity now let's discuss the properties of superconductors so we will start with the first property that is electrical resistance so superconductor has very low value of resistances or we can say that virtually zero electrical resistance second is effect of impurities so when impurities are added to the superconducting elements the superconductivity property is not lost but the value of critical temperature is lower so we can say that if we add any impurity to the superconducting material at that time its superconductivity is not lost but that value of critical temperature is become lower now next is effect of pressure and stress so certain material exhibits superconductivity on increasing the pressure in superconductors or we can say that if we increase the stress it results in increase the value of its critical temperature so here we can say that if we increase the pressure in certain material it exhibits that superconducting property and next if we increase the stress of any material it will result in the increasing value of critical temperature now next is isotope effect so we heard about that isotope word isotope means the atomic number of any material is same but they have different atomic mass so here the critical or transition temperature of superconductor is found to vary with its isotopic mass so we can say that that critical temperature depends on the variation of isotopic mass here you can see in the slide that transition temperature or critical temperature is inversely proportional to the square root of isotopic mass of superconductors so here tc proportional to 1 upon under root m so we can say that critical temperature is inversely proportional to the square root of isotopic mass here in this equation capital m represent that isotopic mass now let's move to the other property that is magnetic field effect if a strong magnetic field applied to a superconductor below its critical temperature that superconductors undergoes a transition from its superconducting state to normal state it means that if we apply external magnetic field to the superconductor when its temperature is below the critical temperature at that time that superconductors comes in a normal state from its superconducting state so we can say that minimum magnetic field required to destroy a superconducting state 
is known as critical magnetic field. So here you can see the equation of critical magnetic field that is Hc equals to at zero bracket one minus T upon T C raised to square. In this equation, at zero represents critical magnetic field at zero Kelvin temperature. T stands for any temperature, and T C stands for critical temperature. So here, the minimum magnetic field required to destroy a superconducting stage is known as critical magnetic field. Now, the next property is critical current and critical current density. So here, a maximum current that can be permitted in a superconducting material without destroying its superconducting state is known as critical current. And that and at that time the density offered by that current is known as critical current density. So the maximum current that can be permitted in superconducting material without destroying its superconducting state that is known as critical current. We know the relations between critical current density and critical current that is given by Jc equals to Ic upon A where Ic stands for critical current and A stands for area of superconducting material. Now the relationship between critical current and critical magnetic field that can be given by Ic equals to 2 pi R Hc where R stands for radius of superconducting wire. Now next property is persistent current. So steady flow of current in a superconducting wire at the superconducting state is also known as persistent current. We can say that when superconductor is at critical temperature or below the critical temperature there will be a steady flow of current flowing through it. And this current is long lasting and remains steady. That current is known as persistent current. So these are the properties of superconductor. Let's quickly revise the properties of superconductor. So the first is electrical resistance. Second is effect of impurities. Third is effect of pressure and stress. Then next we have discussed isotopic effect. In that isotopic effect we have seen that critical temperature is inversely proportional to the square root of isotopic mass. Then we have discussed effect of magnetic field. So the minimum magnetic field required to destroy the superconducting state is known as critical magnetic field. Then we have discussed that critical current. So maximum current that can be permitted in a superconducting material without losing its superconducting property that is critical current. And at that time the density or the current density is also known as critical current density. And at last we have discussed persistent current. So we can say that the steady flow of current in a superconducting wire at critical temperature or its below critical temperature is known as persistent current. Now in next video we will learn one more property of superconducting material that is Meissner effect and we will see that superconductor also behaves as a diamagnetic material and we will define important factor to be related with the superconducting phenomenon. So that's 
it for today's session thanks for watching